Hello, MLB Showdown community. This is the MLB Showdown guru, Kobe Talfus. We're doing our Play for the Cards segment for this week. This week, we're going to be focusing on catchers for the 2012 class. But first, we're going to answer a question from one of you, our faithful viewers. Eddie Zone 44 asks me to spotlight Andrew McCutcheon. As a Pirates fan, he loves Andrew McCutcheon. He's having a great year. McCutcheon right now is going to be the first 10. He's going to be a 1-2 to two out if he holds serve right now. A lot of us are pushing to see what would happen if he can get into that top two spots to be an 11. Either way, if he finishes an 11, he's going to be maybe a 700-point card as a legitimate speed A plus 20 speed with 19 to 20 power, triples, doubles, X, single pluses, great defense. He's going to be a fantastic card. He might be more usable, though, as a 10, in my opinion, depending on how the numbers fall. Either way, wherever he finishes, this guy's going to be runs. He's going to score a lot of runs because of his high on base and his extra base hits and his speed. He's going to knock in a lot of runs if he's batting third because he doesn't walk at all. So they'll single a lot of guys in from second. Thank you, Eddie Zone 44, for sending that in and letting us spotlight him. We'll be coming back to him here in a few weeks when we focus on the center fielders. Now, as we transition to catchers, we're going to be looking at some other guys who could potentially do some damage. Last year, a lot of players from, from the 2011 classes, class what, were just punts. These were guys that were looking just for arms. Uh, Alex Avila was a pretty uh, weak 10 as being the only 10. There wasn't a lot of good hitting options, and the guys that were had relatively weak arms, which wasn't acceptable last year. This year, we have a lot more offense coming from the catcher spot. We have potentially four tens at the moment coming from the catcher spot with Joe Maurer, who will likely qualify at first base like he did last year. Carlos Ruiz, who is just another one of those high average, low walk guys as a 10, who could get a lot of looks just because he's going to knock in a lot of runs. A.J. Ellis from the Dodgers, who's have, having a tough time as of late and not getting a ton of that bats right now. He only has seven homers. Uh, he's but he's keeping that on-base percentage high. So he's looking at being a 10, 20 homer. And Buster Posey right now is actually a 10. He's been able to keep his on-base high. He's on a little bit of a power surge. He has 13 home runs on the year. Posey and Ruiz have a chance to be 19 to 20 as home runs. Where Maurer and Ellis were probably only going to be 20s. As far as arms are concerned, Maurer has been having a relatively weak arm as far as catching people stealing. He's only got a plus three arm. Ruiz has got a 7, and Ellis a 6 at the moment. So the arms are are okay, Maurer at, uh, having too weak of an arm to really be a usable player at the moment. As we drop down into the 9s, we have a pair of guys who uh, will likely not be too usable. Uh, Montero will be the more usable of the two, and that's because right now he has a big arm with a plus 9. He's only going to be a 20 homer, and he's slow. So this might be a good chance to have a player who – Gets on base, really a good pinging option with a high arm for those players who like that. So you don't have to punt for cheap. And then Carlos Santana is just not having a great year. He's getting on base, but he's not going to be anything to write home about. This is looking like another one of those players that's just going to be not very good as a 9, 20 homer, weak arm. He's going to qualify at first base, which is going to make him cost more. He's not going to be able to play first base for you. So he's having a decent year, but he's just not going to end up being a good card. Catchers are a very fickle position where we're really nitpicking on a lot of these guys. Uh, as we go down, some of the good eight options are going to be Yadier Molina. It's looking like an eight, maybe an 18 to 20 speed B because he's been having a fast year with eight steals and only one caught stealing. Uh, whether or not he's actually a speed B is kind of something to look at, and hopefully people can get some feedback on that. Uh, Hannigan out in Cincinnati is going to be an eight again. He seems to get his – on base up pretty high, and then Mike Napoli is currently an 8, so he's been heating up a little bit. Another 8, 18 to 20. He has a weak arm, though, at the moment with only a 3 arm, which makes him very tough to use. When last year he was a 10 with a 7 arm who qualified at first base. Uh, some of the more interesting options that you may not be thinking about are right now Flowers from the White Sox has a plus 10 arm, and also Henry Blanco, who's traditionally had a great arm in the game, also has a plus 10 arm. A player that I think is off the radar because he's been hurt, who could have a, a decent card, um, might be Jonathan Lucroy from the Brewers. Um, 
he has a very high on base. He has very low at bats, but he's been very productive in his at bats. He has five homers and four triples and ten doubles, doing really well. What that translates into a card, I'm not really sure. It really depends on how many at bats he ends up getting. But that is an interesting option, and the verdict is still out on him on what he's going to end up doing. A lot of names that are pretty high up in a lot of you guys' minds as far as Matt Weeders and Brian McCann haven't really been mentioned. And that's because both of them are sixes at the moment, which is sad to think the guys who could be so productive. Matt Weeders had 12 home runs, I feel like, in the first three weeks, and now he still only has 12 home runs. So hopefully he'll get hot again. And Brian McCann has carried the Braves at times in years past, but he hasn't gotten on one of those great hot streaks. It looked like he was a few weeks ago, but he didn't end up being able to put it into gear for long enough. Another player, the most powerful catcher at the moment, is actually Jer- J- is Jared Saltalamachia, who is a five, and he has a big-time homer with 19 at the moment. But as a five, uh, how useful is that going to be? And he's only has a four-arm. So he doesn't look like he's going to end up being a very usable player at, from the catcher position. But it's an interesting option, especially if you can get that on base up, maybe to a seven as an option there. Forgive me, guys. I am a little uh, jazzed up right now as we're working on our first live mock draft coming up here tomorrow. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're looking forward to that. And so if you guys are interested in ever participating in something like that, please continue to follow us on the blog. Send us. Uh, send us comments that you'd like to do that so we can send you information. Um, as I look for other good people, you may want to think about as a catching option. Uh, Kurt Suzuki has a nice big arm, but again, a very low on base of the five. Looks like we're going to have plenty of great punt options here uh, for the five, for the fives and such on base, slow, big arms like we normally do. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with me as I'm a little bit sidetracked this week. Uh, remember to send in your suggestions for next week as we're going to be trying to focus on corner outfield, which has kind of had a resurgence as of late. It's been a weak class compared to the 2000-2001, but I'm excited to see some of the guys next week. If you guys want me to spotlight any specific player, please let me know, and I'd love to do that for you guys. And remember, play for the cards.